Hey guys, it's Derica with Derica's Designs, and today I'm going to teach you how to make this four piece bunny attachment. First, we have the top hat, we have a body with coattails, and of course, two little arms that you can use to hold on to a sign or an Easter egg or whatever it is you choose to put into your wreath. This is a sewn attachment, so you will need your sewing machines. Let's get started. Okay, guys, we are back, and this is what we are making today. Now this is gonna be a very long video because these are a lot of parts here and a lot of little things I added. Now all the little extra things obviously are completely, um, like I added the, the pink rope, if you can see around the little toes. The, this little flower here with the egg in it, not 100% in love with it, but I'll show you how to make it if you want to. Um, super, super easy. Lots of parts to this guy. Lots of parts. So I'm going to do the hat first. If you are a no sewer and you just want to do the hat, then I will get the hat out of the way. And for those of you who are interested in learning to sew this cute little bunny bottom, then we will continue on with the sewn portion. But I have to move these out of the way because they're so big. They take up half of my table. We'll leave the, we'll leave the little hat out here. You can, well, you can't really see it on that corner. You can see it on that corner maybe. <laughs> Anyway, so these are the sewn pieces of the body. We'll set those aside. So we'll first be working on all the hat pieces. We have those two. Um, I cut two of the circles because I want the top of the hat to be just a little bit firmer. Because it's so much bigger, it's big, um, it, it gets a little soft. And since, you know, I have, you know, the foam board, I just cut two of them and I'll glue them together. Speaking of glue, let me turn on the glue guns. Excuse me guys, for one second. I have been waiting to turn the glue guns on and now I need them. <laughs> okay. All right, and then of course you have the um, base of the hat piece. You have now I'm using blue, guys, you use whatever colors you want. This also does not need to be black and white check. You can do whatever you want with this. You can do striped, you can do Easter theme, you can do whatever. But you'll need two pieces of the fabric for the top and bottom. You will need one piece of the fabric to choose for the, well, for the top. I should say this is top and bottom of the brim. This is for the top of the hat. And this one is for the that and this will be the coattails, which we will sew later. Keep throwing into our sew pile. And there is just literally a pile, guys. You just go to the store when you pick out your fabrics that you want to use and the colors that you want to use. And of course, I'm always envisioning, envisioning Hobby Lobby when I tell you this, because that is the most easy place that I can send you to go and get supplies. Because, you know, not everybody has Joann's or Michael's or any of the other warehouse type stores near them. So I got just basic little beads for the belly for on the coattails. I got these tassels. Now these tassels came from a furniture trim at Hobby Lobby. You know, there's that aisle where they have furniture fabrics and they keep the gimp trims and things. Um, a lot of times they have tassels in different colors for furniture. Um, these are probably way too big for this project. They kind of look like earrings. <laughs> I might take off these little balls when we get all this said and done. But um, there's different colors of tassels. Now they are seasonal. Like they, they're not always, they're not always going to have them all the time. But take a look at the little pre-made tassels because making a tassel, you know, it just saves you some time. Now I, this is the end of my pretty blue um, trim. Um, it's blue with a silver. You can find something similar to this, but you don't have to, guys. Find whatever color you have going on and use that. And this is just a very basic black gimp trim. Gimp, of course, you find in the furniture um, fabric and trim section. I have a piece of black satin. This is for the waistband of the coattails. Just helps you. A big old thing of pink yarn. And also, I'll show you in order to do the yarn, you're not gonna you're not gonna be able to thread this through a needle. I use a yarn needle. This is what's called a. It is not sharp at all, but it has a huge huge hole in it so that you can put the yarn through. I'm assuming you can get these in the yarn section. I just had a bunch forever. 
I think this is my last one. I've lost them over the years or they're stuck inside um, reams of yarn somewhere upstairs and I never pulled them out. It's just a yarn needle, big hole. You, you, could, you might be able to find an upholstery needle with a big enough hole that will get yarn through it, but just this is just my go-to when I'm doing the little toes and things. All right, and then of course we have some feather boa because you know, he's a little, I'm always a little extra with these bunnies. Feather boa, 100% optional. Actually, without the feather boa on here, it does look super cute still. So um, this is the center of the coattails where the buttons will go. And this is the interior of our little ears. Now our ears are cut at an angle, if you've noticed. I didn't cut them straight up and down. They are at an angle. Um, I prefer it that way. Where are my ears? I think, oh, I lost them over here. So when we sew, see how they're cut at an angle? When we sew these, we're going to make sure we keep that angle. Oh, you know what? Oh yeah, sorry. I keep remembering things that I forgot, but I'm like, no, I didn't forget. I have wire. I have wire. <laughs> There's a lot of pieces and parts that go together to make this. So just bear with me guys, because you know, kind of remember every little thing is not that easy. So we will sew these ears, we'll flip them right side out. We will sew this cotton, satin, whatever you prefer to use on here, because we're going to cover this with trim. If you are not covering your ears with trim like this one, then you want to glue this on, okay? The, the sewing would not look nice. Let's put it that way, okay? So we'll get going on this. I know this is gonna be a long video, so I wanna just get started and make sure I haven't even um, warmed up my sewing machine yet, so I'm just gonna re-thread. Whenever you guys start sewing a project, if it's been a couple of days or if it's been a little while, always pull out your, your feeder thread from the top. I always cut off all of that thread because sometimes it gets fuzz balls on it. Like in here, it tends to be, um, you know, there's just fuzzy, you know, things flying around, cat hair, that sort of thing. So start with a nice, fresh, clean thread and thread your machine. Now your bobbin will be fine because it's inside, it's protected, but this outside thread, um, tension-wise and everything else, I personally like to just go ahead and give it a good re-thread if I haven't used the machine in a couple of days. And I know it's just been sitting here collecting dust, okay? Turn the machine on because, you know. Okay, there we go. Cut off the excess. Sorry about the little doggy outside the window barking. I'm sure she is keeping the neighborhood safe. Yeah, from what? I don't know, but you know. All right, so I'm just going to put a couple of pins in these ears. Now you can pin the whole thing if you are more comfortable. Lots of people feel way more comfortable putting all the pins in. <laughs> so um, not a problem, totally up to you. So we will go ahead and get these sewn. Okay, we're gonna sew this. Hopefully you guys can see. Now I'm just doing a very straight stitch um, you know, somewhere between a two and a three, um, depending on what your machine has. Now, if you don't want to sew these ears, you can glue them together. I'm just saying, they don't, they don't always look as good. You can flip this around, but this is that plush felt that we all love. You can flip them around and you can just sew them. Totally doable. Just not, <laughs> it's just not my preference, but absolutely try it and see what you think. And if you're good with it, that's all that matters. Okay, so flip it around, make sure I didn't miss any spots. Plush felt is so nice to work with. That is why I chose it for this project specifically. It's just easy and it's still cute. It still has that little bit of a fluff to it. It's not long pile hair like bunny hair. It just, or that darn curly fleece that we all absolutely hate. <laughs> So, 
flip those around. Okay, so if you are sewing these and not gluing them, if you are going to glue these, you would want to glue your wire down before you glued the two pieces together. Let me find another set here. Hold on one second. Just so I can show you as a guide. So we are sewing ours, but if you had a set like this that you were going to glue together, what you would do, these are about nine inches. Let's just say nine inches. So you're gonna need nine and nine, which is 18 plus a couple inches hanging off the end. So we're just gonna do like 20, 22-ish, somewhere in there. Don't have to be super specific because you can always trim it off. So I always like to go just a little bit bigger. So I'm gonna do 22. And you can use, guys, you can use um, floral wire, the thin green wire for this. It does not have to be this heavy duty wire at all. So, and you know what you could use, which might even be easier, pipe cleaners. You take two pipe cleaners, just kind of twist the top together up here, um, make it one big, you know, like that. What you would do is on the, on the inside of your ear is you would place some glue up here, set that on there, and then do a line of glue all the way down each side. Now these ears are gonna stand up even with the pipe cleaner. Like I said, you don't have to use this big heavy wire. You absolutely can. And then what? once you get all of that, then you place some more glue all the way to the edge as, as far as you can, and you glue the second piece on top of it. So essentially you make this cute little ear like that. And then you would grab, when that was dry, you would just take your inside color, whatever you have, and you would glue that onto it. You see how I did that with not even sewing? Totally cute, totally doable. I prefer the sewn, but you guys don't. And what you would want to do is after you've glued it all, you really want to make sure you get glue in all these little edges and like really squeeze them together. And then push the fur over it to try to eliminate that line around the edge. Now, if you wanted to, you could put trim around the edge. You could, um, if you glue this on, you could put trim around here and put trim around the edge. You could put feather boa around the edge. I mean, how cute would that be? Holy moly. Hold on, we gotta try this. The feather boa around the edge, make them really, so that when they're on the hat, they're like really flirty and foofy. I love that. I love that. I kind of would do different colors though. This is a little too much blue, but I would find something that would incorporate, like this would incorporate the blue, but not be a solid. You know what I mean? So when you're looking for your fabrics, think about that. So for new no sewers, this is definitely an alternative that absolutely will work. It's just going to take you um, maybe a little more supplies and a little more ingenuity to try to glue it all together and uh, okay, pull those apart now because we don't need those, right? Put them back in the drawer. So anyway, for you no sewers, that is how you would do it. But for the rest of us who might like to sew, now sewing on with wire, never easy. Um, never easy. I, I tend, if you don't, I use my fingernails to hold the wire away from the needle on the sewing machine. If, if you don't have fingernails, I mean, you really kind of have to dig in there. I don't really know an easier way to tell you. Um, but basically, I'll show you in just a second. But I make a, I make a, Let's do it. like a triangle because and I want it open big and open because I want that I want that spring from the wire to open our ear for us it's not a lot this isn't super heavy but see how it just automatically um you know it wasn't closed in it wasn't crossed over like that it's wide open and you push it all the way and you want to oops you want to feel that tip all the way up in the tip up there and make sure your seams or your wire is right along your seams like that. So just take your wire. I just set it. I set both ends on the table so that they're even. And then I just squeeze the end to make a triangle up here. And then just use your fingers. Now this wire, I've never, I've been buying this wire for years. It is a um, aluminum fencing wire, like an electric fence like you would use. But I like the, I liked the aluminum because the aluminum would never change your finger. It would never come off on your fingers like the steel would. 
the steel would make your fingers gray. But the last few batches of this I bought is turning my fingers gray. So I'm gonna be on the lookout for a better wire that isn't going to turn everything gray. I don't know why all of a sudden. I mean, it's aluminum, it should not. Um, I think I think they powder coat it with something to get it on these reels. And that powder coating is what is coming off. I was a little disappointed. My last, I ordered by the case. My last case was not the best. Okay, oops. So again, see, I just totally wonked that one. So we're gonna take it out. We're gonna re, redo it. Make sure it's a nice big open triangle. And we're just gonna slide it in there, just like that. Okay. So I'm not going to sew around this wire edge. You can, um, but to me, it's just a little bit overkill. I am going to make sure we have a left. See, this is, these are the going the same direction. So you I flip one over. You need them going in opposite directions so they don't sit straight up on your hat. See how these kind of one, well, you can, you can barely tell, but they kind of, one goes this way, one kind of goes this way. I didn't like them straight up and down. It just didn't look right to me. All right, so then you just match up. If you're using satin, make sure you use the right side. There's a very dull side and a very shiny side. Like that. So now, as I'm sewing, I am going to use my fingernails all the way around as we go to make sure that I can feel this wire all the way up in there, okay? but we're not gonna sew over near the wire. We're sewing on the edge of this blue, but I don't want that wire at all coming in contact with my sewing needle. Because you guys know, that is one of the worst sounds and the worst feelings. Ooh. So I'm, try I'm trying to line up. I wanna make sure my seams are on the side. I don't want it twisted. See how that's twisted? You can see that seam right up front. I don't want that right up front. So I'm twisting it around so that my seams are actually on the sides. And then you have that. And I'm gonna put, right here in the end, I'm gonna put a pin just to kind of hold it centered. And I'll do another one up here towards the top, but not in my way, because I don't wanna to have to. There, just like that. All right, so now we get it in here. Now there's just a straight stitch. And um, my fingernails are right here on the edge. I know it's really hard to see. If I was left-handed, you could see. My fingernails are just gonna follow this along and just make sure that I can feel that wire. I mean, it's a good inch away. So, I mean, chances of it getting in the way are slim, but I'm just over, over cautious about it because I hate it when the needle hits. Oh my goodness. Remember, if you are putting a trim on here, sewing it is fine. If you choose not to put a trim, personally, I would glue it. Okay, hot glue it. Because that, that seam around it, the white thread, is not pretty. Even if you use blue thread, it still wouldn't be pretty. So, you know what we do. If it's not pretty, we cover it with trim. All right, the same thing for this one. I'm just using these pins just to kind of hold it centered. It's not really doing much else for me here. Okay, same thing all the way around. Go ahead and finish up with our trims while we're here. Go ahead and get these pieces ready to go. Let's see if my glue gun is hot yet. There we go. 
I'll use this little one. And now we're just going to go right down that, that seam that we just sewed and place the trim on here. Oh, there's something green. Oops, I just made a mess. I made a mess with hot glue. It's all right, let it cool. It'll peel right off. All right, so at the top part, you can cut it and add another piece. I just like to kind of fold over the trim to make it triangular up top, kind of like that. You can cut it. I mean, this trim is not too thick. Some of the thicker ones you have to cut and, you know, stop there, cut it, add another one. But this one's not too bad. Ah! Oh, you know what it is? Ah, darn it. It's these darn glue sticks. I remember... Every time I come in here, I get upset with these glue sticks. I haven't run out of them yet, but I will. <laughs> Once they're gone, they're gone for good. I... Okay, so there's one ear. It's ready to go. We'll set that aside. And we'll do this one. We'll be more careful because I know this is the stringiest glue stick ever known to crafting here. it down. Now you could use anything for this trim. Um, if you want to go something that's a little less expensive than the actual trim, use yarn. Use a th like that thick velvet yarn, you know, in different colors. I use lots of yarns for things because you know what? You get a whole huge ream of yarn, skein of yarn. I keep saying ream, skein of yarn for just a few dollars. I mean, use yarns. And we have some projects coming up where I have just yarn just makes the most sense for me when you when you're using the quantity that we need to use um, and price wise. So if you are doing this in a pale Easter pink, you know, like a, this kind of pink, try to find a pale a little bit thicker. Obviously, you wouldn't want to go with basic yarn like this. You would want to go with a, the thicker um, chenille velvets. There's so many different kinds, but something that's maybe not the exact color because you want a little bit of color contrast, but something similar, right? Okay, both our ears are done and ready for when we need them. Okay, and let's just go to town with this one. Let's well, I'm gonna glue these two together. Like I said before, I like the top to be a little firmer on this big hat because it, like on an Uncle Sam hat where it's straight up and down, you know, like it's a, a stovepipe top of hat, you have this to hold it much better. But when it's um, flared out like this one, um, I just feel, I don't know, maybe it's just me. I feel like I just want a little more on the top, a little layer. But you don't have to, okay? On the little six inch top hats, I rarely do two on the top. It's, I mostly just do this on the eight inch top hat because it is so much wider. But we're just gonna glue those together, okay? And then we're gonna grab the top piece. And now here, if you have a glue stick, guys, I did not bring the glue stick with me, but if you have a glue stick, you can use your glue stick to glue this on as well. Um, you will just need some hot glue around the edges. I didn't bring the glue stick. I think I've done that in another tutorial where I use a glue stick, not a fabric glue stick, guys. I'm talking Elmer's little kid. I mean, just craft glue stick. And I use that to hold the fabric down to this big piece. And I just hot glue the edges. And the reason I do that, um, if you're using a fabric that is super thin, especially satin like this, you're going to see every little glue swiggle you put underneath it. Okay, if it's a very thin, lightly colored cotton, you're going to see every little glue squiggle. It's just not going to be. But since this is such a very um, different pattern, I mean, I can feel the glue squiggles under here, but I cannot see them through the fabric. So if you're making yours and you go wah, 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 you know, all your hot glue and you put your fabric on there and you can see every single little, it's. It's one of my biggest frustrations. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> so that's why I use, I'll use the glue stick on the center and then I'll go around and I will hot glue all the edges to pull it in place and make it stay. 
but the center is nice and flat because we just use glue stick underneath it, if that makes sense. I know, I tend to ramble on, but these are the little things. But since this fabric, I don't have to worry about seeing all the little squiggles and wiggles because, Lord, you're too busy looking at the pattern, right? So we're just gonna go all the way around with the glue gun. And we'll put some in the center. Now, I'm, if there's a big glob, I'm going to use the nozzle of my glue gun to kind of smear it out just a little bit. And I'll lay that down there. Okay. I'm going to flip it around. Do this side, same thing. All the way up towards the edges. Most important is to get the edges. You know, the center, once you pull it taut, the center is going to hold no matter what. You really want to make sure you're getting all the way up to the edges. Now, if you, if yours comes out like this one, like mine did, see I have some foam left, leave it. We're going to put trim over that. Don't, don't worry about cutting that off. And I, just pulling. Sometimes the hot glue will melt the foam and it'll pull, it'll pull your fabric, but on this fabric, I don't think you notice if it pulled it, so it's okay. All right, so we have, this is different than the six inch top hat that we've done before. We have a thick five millimeter piece of foam and then part of our thin, the normal two millimeter foam that we've used on everything else. And the reason I do this, we're going to push our ears through this one and then it's just too flimsy to hold it. Even two of these is too flimsy to hold it. So I push the ears through this one and then I glue it onto this base. This is our base and it's gonna hold those ears up for us. Okay, so now, okay, so now we will attach our ears. First though, before I do anything, um, just so that the wire is secure in there, I like to stick the tip of my glue gun and just put a little glob of glue in that section there. Not a lot, but it just holds, holds the wire in place for you. And then what I do is I take it to the end of the table and you know it is cut at an angle. This needs to come off there. It is going to be at an angle. So when I bend my wire, then I want to make sure I don't bend them evenly because one of them should be longer than the other. I'm sure a little more off that one. These were super long. So oops. put a little blob in here, just a little, not enough that it eats out and gets all of your fingers, but um, just want to hold those wires. Make sure you push, keep pushing those wires in to make sure they're inside of there. I just bend them on the table. I know it probably looks silly, but all right. So um, on the the pattern that you have, there are there are dots on it. You probably can't see them too well, but the pattern has these circles like this. And um, that's just a good placement of where to put the um, bunny ears. Now, I don't have a copy of that right here in front of me. So what I'm gonna do, it's just, um, I can feel that little dots that I just made up under here. Um, you could very easily, if you, if you have your piece of pattern, the paper part, you can cut holes around each one of those. That way, all you have to do is set it on top of your fabric and make a circle in those holes. Use it as a template and it's much easier that way. But we're going to go with it this way. All right. So this is our top piece. This flimsy top piece is just what we're going to use to hold our ears up. That's pretty much all this is for. We want to hold our ears up. So make sure you get glue in the middle because the top hat portion is going to be glued to that. Well, okay, I'll just go with it. Smear it out like that. Let me go get my pattern really quick. I left it on the desk. But 
when I set that fabric down, it didn't fall perfectly centered. And I want to make sure my the holes for my bunny hat are even. So I'm digging through my pattern trying to find that piece. Here it is. So see how I've actually like made holes through them? So now you line it up on your foam piece like that. And then I just like to, uh, you can use a white pen, you can use chalk. It just depends on what color you're, you're trying to write on. And make some marks like that. And then you can keep your template, you know, and use it for whatever top hats you're making in the future. So I think what I'll do now, I'm going to use these little scissors, but you can use your X-Acto knife. I'm just going to just barely cut a little tiny or poke a little hole through here. Just so. Yeah, they look even. Okay. So remember your ears, you don't want them crisscrossing. <laughs> you want them to be going away from each other. So this side goes on here. Like that. And you push your wire all the way into it. I'm using a silicone pad. This is one from Surebonder. But you really, it's something that if you want to make these attachments, this silicone pads, they really are a necessity. I always buy an extra that I can cut up and make like little pot holders with it, little so you can grab things with your fingers um, and not burn yourself. So I put glue down each of those and I'm just going to set it on there. I'm going to push it down. I'm going to make sure that um, that uh, wire is completely glued in there. And then find my other little holes here. They just poke through pretty easy. That's why I use the thin one on top. It just pokes through super easy. Well, maybe. <laughs> that wire bent on me. Okay, so you push them all the way in. When you flip it over, let's, let's try that again. When you're, once you push them in, just um, press on it. Make sure your wires are flat. You don't want them sticking up. So there. So now... And don't try to do this on your cutting table, your cutting mat. It, hot glue will stick to your cutting mat and you'll never get it up. And you'll probably end up tearing your foam and everything else. So always use a silicone mat of some sort. Now you can use kitchen silicone mats. If you do resin at all that, you know, use a silicone mat under your resin, all of that, it all works. But it has to be something where it just pulls off like that, like it doesn't stick forever. All right. So now let's put our, let's put our base piece on here. While we're letting this cool, I'm just going to put it back over like that. I want it to cool like that. And we're going to um, glue our base piece. This is just the thick base of it. Um, that'll help hold up the ears and everything and keep them from, keep them just from flopping over. And we're just going to glue all the way around. Set it in there and then I always go flip it over and stretch out all the fabric so that it's nice and flat across. So on this one, now that the ears have cooled, I'm going to trim off this excess fabric that we do not need. We will be placing trim around this edge. So that's why it's important to make sure you get the hot glue all the way to the edge of these pieces for the brim of the hat. Because once you put the trim on, um, sometimes it can bubble up the edge if the edge is not glued really well. Okay, so now we'll do the same thing for this one. Okay, so now that one is ready. Then um, I'm going to line these up on here. Now these may not fit 100% perfectly. Maybe you, you know, didn't, it's okay. We'll go back and retrim it if it's not 100%, if there's a little bit hanging over. So don't worry about that. But for right now, I'm gonna put glue all the way to the edges. 
and then plenty of it on the inside to hold it. I just did, I just did this back half right now because I want to make sure that line is straight back there. If this line is straight back there and both pieces are even, then the front will be very close to being a perfect match. So now we just grab the ears, fold it back like this, throw some glue on there. The first thing I could feel was right here in front of this ear. You see how that piece is coming up like I didn't even glue it or anything. I'm not even sure what's going on with it. So I am going to add some more glue on that. I, you don't want your fabric to be able to be peeled up anywhere all the way around it. So like I said, it'll the trim might uh, cause it to bubble up when you add the trim to it and add the pressure behind it. So, oh yeah, this whole section here didn't do great. So I just go back around it and then see how, okay, right here, my, my top piece was clearly bigger than my bottom piece, but that's okay. We just, we're just gonna cut it off. Make them even so that we put our trim on them. It's not being jutted out by the top or the bottom piece. Like that. Okay, I'm gonna fit. No, oh, actually, it looks good now. All right, so we have our little ears, super cute. And while we have this just ready to go, we're gonna go ahead and throw our trim on it. Oh, there's a big spot. Look at that spot where there's no glue. So I think on the bottom we put this blue again. So I like, oops, that's a knot. Go very light on the glue and make sure you're spreading it with the nozzle as you go down. I like my meeting point to be in the center back here. You guys can do it any way you want. That's just once again me doing things the way I've always done them really no rhyme or reason other than I like it to be centered. And then you just pull, see when you, when you pull your trim like this, if your fabric is not glued on, this is where it would bubble up over. It would, the trim itself would actually cause the, the fabric to bubble up. And then you would have to go back and get your fingers in there and try to glue it down. So that's why I always tell you just Try to glue as close to the edge as possible. And you don't have to glue the whole thing in one shot. You can glue little, little section by little section if you're more comfortable with that. And using the nozzle, kind of spread out the glue. Just like that, all the way around. On this back piece, I just go right to where the center is going to be and I give it a snip. And I just fold it over. Now at this point, I would put, you can use an X-Acto knife, scissors, whatever you have. Go ahead and just punch a hole. You can wait till you're done on this too, depending on how you want to um, attach it. I just punch a hole in it that you could put a pipe cleaner through later if you needed to, to attach it to a wreath or whatever. Okay, so now we have that part done. We're gonna let all that cool. We're gonna work on this. Now we do not need all this excess. I'm gonna cut off three sides. I'm gonna leave this long side over here. I'm not cutting that. I'm gonna cut the other three though, because they'll just it'll just bunch up and be in the way. Jeez. Okay. We cut all of that off. All right, as we do with our other top hats, 
We're going to take this end, the, the, the extra end is down here. We're going to put hot glue on this edge and then in front of our, as we're towards ourselves like this, we're going to set it down a little bit behind the edge of the foam here. And then we're just going to roll it down. And then I usually just stick my hand inside just like that and hold it. Don't put so much glue on it that you burn yourself or, I mean, you can try to get your silicone in there or whatever you need. Um, but that's how that is done, okay? So this is why it's important to make sure these edges are glued to the foam. You don't want this pulling up away from it. So, so there's glue on the edge. I'm about half an inch from the edge of the foam and then I'm just gonna turn it and roll it towards me. And then I just put my hand in there and hold it. Get my scissors. And I'm, I'm just gonna hold it for a little bit. We don't want it coming apart. Now, if, if you put your hand in there and you feel hot glue, then you know grab something to put inside to save your hand, protect your hand, okay? Just uh, don't burn yourself on this. Take some practice. And then I usually use my, my smaller detail gun. Now we have this, we have this flap that we haven't glued down yet. So I take my smaller gun and I just go in here. Of course I'm gonna run out of glue as we do this. Just go in here and I put some glue along the edge of this little flap. You don't need a lot, I'm just kind of squiggling it back and forth. I'm gonna use my silicone, and again, I'm gonna roll it, and now I'm gonna push down the whole thing again so that when I flip it over, it's a nice, flat, solid seam. There's no bulkiness, there's no bunching or anything like that. And this one, I have extra fabric hanging off back here, so I wanna give that a little trim. And now what you wanna do is a stand-up test. If yours, <laughs> This one's teeter-tottering pretty good. So what I do, I just eyeball it. When you look at it, you can tell this little end here, I probably didn't cut it short enough, so I'm just gonna trim some off. And this side too, because it was teeter-tottering, so it must be, I didn't cut it well. So now when I set it down, no teeter-totter. Just, well, tiniest bit, but nothing like it was doing. All right, so now we want to put our top on. Remember, this is the two pieces glued together. All right, this part is, is a little trickier. This is a big space. You, you kind of have to go relatively quick on this. So again, I'm gonna put it like this on that mat. If you're doing this and glue drips inside this hat, just leave it, it's not gonna hurt anything. If it drips down onto this, it's okay. Don't try to clean it up. Just keep going in your circle, okay? Start here at the top, get a nice bead of glue, make sure you have a new glue stick so you're not running out, and just do a bead of glue. And you kind of want it, you know, a full bead. You want it to be thick. See how it's dripping? My, one of mine just dripped. It's okay, leave it. Um, it's not gonna hurt a thing, okay? And then set this down. But after you set it down, use your head, not my big old head, <laughs> and make sure you're not, hanging over any of the edges. And you can look inside and kind of tell that you're, you're circular. It's not, you know, oval. Um, but try not to mess with these edges if you can. See, I mean, we have big globs of glue on there. We're gonna cut all this off, it's okay. And then we're gonna cover it with trim. So now we have to let that cool. We can't touch that for a few minutes here. I'll let that go. Okay, so while that is cooling, I'm gonna show you how we made the little flower in the front, even though, like I told you, I wasn't really thrilled with it. This little bow and flower here. This is kind of how I make a lot of my little flower. Whoops. <laughs> Put the egg in there and um, it's it lives in there now. There we go. I think it, it's not that I didn't like the flower. I just, I thought the egg was corny. But, okay, this is the 25 yard um, rolls of seven eighths of an inch um, trim or ribbon from Deco Exchange. 
I bought this in every single color. <laughs> Every color they had available at that time. I think I'm still missing three colors, so I need to go back and see. But it is wired seven eighths of an inch ribbon, and it's really good. So I usually go about 20 inches, and this, guys, this is totally optional. Like I said, I wasn't 100% like in love with the little flower when I did it. You can make it bigger and go out and around. Make, if you want the flower to be much, much bigger, that's up to you. But what you would do is you push the wire through on one end and then I like to just wrap it back and forth and wrap it over itself. What Basically what you're wanting to do is create a little stopper here. You do not want this wire coming back through and there's really no anything but if you pull it too far then you pull it out this side. So um, I just pull out a little bit like maybe a quarter to a half of an inch and then I just zigzag it so it won't go back through. And then at the on the same bottom side, push the wire through on the other one and then just start pulling it. You guys, I'm sure y'all have done this. So if ever you want to make a flower, even a pick or add one of these little flowers to a pick to match the ribbon in your wreath, this is how you do it. You can make these little flowers all day long. You can use two and a half inch ribbon and fold it in half and do the exact same thing. And then it's a bigger, fuller, um, but you can use it with the ribbon that you're using in your attachment or in your wreath so that they match. And then here again, and you have more to work with on this side, but fold it in half and then just make it so it's not going to come off of there like that. Simple and easy. All I do is pull, I didn't pull the other end. I mean the other side, just that one side because now it'll just curl around. It just makes like this little, uh, I don't want the wire right on top. I'm gonna tuck the wire back. And then you just, like, like, like a coil of a snake kind of, it just sort of let it go around like that. I'm gonna use a small glue gun because I don't need too much glue on this. And I just, I just glue the little pieces down, you know. Um, that wire does not want to stay hidden. Now this is this is kind of a burlapy sort of fabric or ribbon, so I'm, it, the glue is seeping through it. So I'm going to use the silicone mat just to hold it, because you want all those letter, you want the in the center, the center ring. You want that to be compressed, and then you can fluff out the outer rings. So see now it's it's flat like a pancake. I mean it's literally, but you can just pull up. Now this would look cute with several more layers um, if you wanted to, but I would use a bigger Easter egg if you're going to go bigger. So I fluff it up and put the silly little Easter egg in there. These I got these at Hobby Lobby. I, they didn't have much to choose from. Okay, this was kind of it. Um, even Dollar Tree when I went a few weeks ago didn't have anything Easter out whatsoever. So you see, you can add this to a pick. Um, you can add this, say you, you have a big pick and you have all these cute little florals and things on it, but you wanted to add a couple of your own, but you just throw some glue on the back here and stick it to one of the branches. I mean, you can add pops of color that uh, with using the ribbon that ties your whole wreath together. Okay, I'm gonna set that aside. All right, so now we're ready and we want to trim off this extra. Now that it's all cooled off, don't try to cut this, guys, if it's still warm. You're just going to gum up your scissors. Ugh, it's just a total pain in the behind. So, And hopefully, if you've been with me long enough to know, it does seem like I make things bigger and I have a lot of excess, but you know what? I would rather make the circle bigger and throw this scrap away than try to... I would still be sitting here trying to line up perfect edges. I would still be... <laughs> trying to make this thing fit this thing. I mean, it, it's just not worth it. Throw away the scraps, guys. Just throw away, throw them away. Okay, so now we're going to attach. Now I'm going to bend my little ears forward just so I can see what I'm doing. And we're going to do the same thing. We know where our seam is. You can look inside. There's our seam. We know that needs to go in the back. But, well, don't do it over your project. I would do it over here. Put a nice heavy bead, just like we did on the other 
good feed. If it drips, let it drip down and hit the mat or whatever, and then set it right dead center of all of that. And then just hold it on there for a second. You don't want to, uh, don't want to mess with it yet. There we go. We let that cool off. We'll try to get some of this hot glue off of here. It's creating a large speed bump on my cutting mat. Alrighty. So after that has cooled, we will add some of this. Now, if you wanted to use any, well, you can use any kind of trim you want on this, really. Um, I'm going to use a small glue gun. When I'm working with trims, this might not be cooled off enough yet. Normally, I would lay it on its side. Let's see how it, oh, the ears are holding it up. There we go. That's good. So, all right, glue stick. Get in there. We're going to put, using the nozzle to kind of spread the glue. Just make sure your trim goes all the way up to the top. Make sure it's covering all of the white foam. Sometimes you have to push it up just a little bit, okay? Then just keep going all the way around. Section at a time. But make sure your uh, your base is good and cooled off. Don't uh, don't try to do this if your base or your ears or anything else is still not completely 100% cooled to where it won't be ruined by you torquing on it here. This glue gun. As I go, I'm just. I put a line of glue and then I use my nozzle to kind of spread the glue out as I go. I'll go back and forth over it just, just to make sure it, uh, it isn't a big glob. That's good. Because you guys, on this GIMP especially, most trims actually, especially sequins, GIMPs, they have holes in them. You put too much glue under them, <laughs> it seeps out and you can see it. And um, that's just not pretty. I'm going to hold it. I'm going to trim it off right there. So make sure you spread your glue. Gimp will unravel on you like this one did. So, oops. I'm just going to cut off some of this edge here. Now, like that, see how I, I cut it off, but it's still sticky. So I'm just going to hold that together. There's one more piece I need to cut off here that came unraveled, but I should should have waited until it completely cooled before I cut it. There we go. So there, I mean, that's pretty much a basic. Now, guys, you can do anything. And if you omit the ears, if you omit the ears, you don't need the two layers of the base foam, right? You don't need the top thin layer and then the bottom five millimeter thick layer. You would just need the five millimeter or you could use foam board. You can, you can glue this type of soft foam to a foam board base if you don't want to buy the five millimeter. Um, both work just fine. In fact, this one, that is foam board right there. There's a layer of the thin foam up here to hold my ears on, but it's foam board on the bottom. This one is flexible. It's foam, it's foam all the way through. Either way works, just use what you have, what you have on hand, right? Always. Okay, so now, basically, I'm just gonna put some, some bling on here. Now, I think with this one, I went behind it and then I decided I wanted to go in front of it. I just like the way the feathers look in front. So they go all the way around, so. We're going to just throw some glue on here. We're going to cover it up. And then. I need to cut 
cut this one about right here. And then grab just a little more glue. Don't need to glue a heck a bunch of it. I mostly make sure I have glue in the back, glue over here in the front, and then I'm gonna put my ears back up where they're supposed to be. Like that. And you have this cute little, and you can put, like I said, if you have a bigger e egg or something you can put there, or you can, if you want to, if you like this little flower and egg, you can put that on there. It's just, that's where it goes into your realm and you take it and run with it. So guys, that is our eight inch bunny top hat. And I mean, you have all the basics now to do whatever you like. And if you're just doing the top hats, make them as elaborate and over the top as you can. They're incredible sellers. At least they have always been for me. If I went into business just making top hats, then I would still have just as successful of a business as I do. I'm telling you, you might think we do a lot of top hats in this group, but it's because they're sellers. People ask for them all the time. The more elaborate, the more absolutely just crazy with it you go, the better. <laughs> I mean that very seriously. Okay, so we will get these out of the way. Now, clear this off. Now we will work on the sewing portion of our, see so these tassels are way too long. <laughs> oh goodness. Yeah, I should have cut them off, but that's okay. Um, super cute, super easy. This uh, plush felt makes this super easy. And then just a little pause. And I put wire in them because I like to be able to bend them. I want customers to be able to have it holding an Easter egg or a sign or whatever. So this is the next project. We will need our sewing extender because I like it. Don't have to have this. I just like it. I like having the platform. So I can get everything else out of the way. Alrighty. So we will do a little hot glue stuff later when we make the um, coattails, but for right now, we're gonna get this sewing underway. All right, well, again, we need, <laughs> we have no room, so we'll move him up here for just a minute because we, we need to pin this guy and I wanna have a nice flat surface here. Of course, my little pin thing is a mess. And I don't put in a ton of pins, but uh, this plush felt, it hangs on to itself really well. Same way felt does. It's not slippery. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to stay where you put it. I just, because it's so large and I'm spinning it around, I want to make sure the toes, the heels, I want to make sure all of this stuff stays where it's supposed to so that I don't have to keep going back and readjusting it. So just like that, just some, and let's see what else we're gonna sew. We're gonna sew these little arms. We'll go ahead and pin these while we're here. Now, these little digits on here, they're not there for you to make sure they are deep um, finger, like very visible. It's mostly just to let you know, you cut the end of the paw. See how we put the yarn in between the little paw? We're going to pull that tight and it's going to pull it in anyway. So this end here, um, even though there, there are three little, you know, fingered paw print, whatever, I don't know what the heck you call them. Um, don't, don't think that you have to do them like precise when you sew, because once we put that yarn in there and tug on it, it's going to pull it down. It's going to give you that definition, even with, even if we just sew this straight across, it would probably still give you a little bit of definition. Or if you wanted, you could just do round paws. I think we've definitely had a project where we just did round paws. I don't remember at the moment which one it was, but for sure we did. I just like to give you guys different, different things every time. 
And then we are also going to sew this. Now the, the coattails, you might think, well, why am I using two pieces of this fabric? It's because I have a lot of this fabric and I'm not really worried about, you know, using it up. But if you had some scrap felt to put behind this, just scrap something. All the, it's just, it, it fits better, it lays better if you have two layers instead of just one. One is really thin. It doesn't hold the trims as well as I would like it to. So I always try to do the pattern print on the front and then something on the back just for stability. Okay, and we are not going to sew this piece and flip it around. We're just gonna sew it and we're gonna, then we'll glue trim over it. So, always with the trim, always. Always count on me using trim. So, we'll get these little paws out of the way. Do these first, basic straight stitch. Make sure all, everything is flat, ready to go. Make sure I didn't leave any holes, which I did not. Push it through. I have a dowel here and I'm just going to show you. I sewed the little digits, the little fingers on the end, but I didn't sew them like really drastically. You know, it's just a little bump, bump, bump. That way I know where to put my yarn right here. So to me, it just makes it. Makes it easier to get the yarn in there. One of the things I do love about the plush felt is it does not stretch like fleece. You absolutely can use fleece for this bunny. If you had some white fleece and you just wanted to, you 100% could use white fleece. It's a little stretchy, so you just have to make, a, you know, take that into consideration when you're sewing it and tugging on it and all that stuff. So there's our little, our little body. Of course, I'll push these toes out before we start to stuff it. But I'm gonna go ahead and sew our coattails, that way I can get this uh, sewing machine extender out of here. I'm just gonna go right along the edge. Remember, we're sewing trim over this. But we do not have to uh, flip it around. If you flip it around, it's just gonna make it big and bulky anyway. So the top, we're going to glue the black strip up here. I don't see it necessary. Nobody's going to see this top portion. And then this is just being held together so that they don't, they, you know, lay um, together and we're going to add trim around it, which I'm looking at my pitiful little piece of trim here. I don't know if we have enough. Huh? All right. We'll worry about that when we get to it. <laughs> There's always something, right? This was the last piece I had of this and I thought I had enough, but that's okay. But for right now, we're gonna go ahead and stuff these three pieces. Okay, 
So we have them all stuffed now. He is super fat. Another thing, this plush felt, I know I keep saying how great it is, but it doesn't allow, you don't see any dimples or that cellulite look that you use when you get, when you use fleece, you get that. It's really hard not to. So make sure you have some scrap tabs to place into your top so that you can sew it. I just fold them in half, you know, any size tab would work. I mean, just think about what you, how big you would like it if you had to put a pet cleaner through it to hold it to your wreath. All right, and we're just gonna sew this across the top. Make sure you go through the tabs. Now we have this nice seam on there, both sides. Some of these I do, and it's just out of habit. I always flip them over and sew it again. Um, it's just, I don't know why. I just like to make sure that when they pull on these, tug on these tabs, they are not going anywhere. Okay, so we will set this aside. And let's work on our coattails and hope to goodness we have enough fabric. <laughs> okay, we can get rid of this now. We're done sewing. We'll just leave it there for the moment. Oh, almost, almost lost it. Okay, this is enough work. room for us. We don't need that anymore. Okay, so again, a blue piece of satin to tie in with our um, satin on our hat and our ears. I'm just, I'm just going to glue this. I'm going to center it here and glue it because we will be adding trim, right? Lots of trim. So set it down. Oops. Well, that didn't work. I'm going to glue down this bottom part here because it's more important. So again, if you, if you haven't seen me do this in the past, whenever you are gluing something that's long like this, or just, there's a lot of part, use your hand to hold it. Excuse all my band-aids, but <laughs> lift up this side, Oops. use your hand to hold it in place. It's not going anywhere. Um, I hold it with my thumb and you can glue directly to the item in your hand or directly onto, and because of that, I felt like I needed to glue onto the table um, because I didn't, I didn't leave myself much room. So see, I just glued it down. And now when you flip it around, of course I need another glue stick because what is life, what is craft life without running out of glue sticks every single time you do something else? Okay, so now I'm just gonna glue up the edges here. I'm going to let it fall naturally where it wants to go. And I'm, I'm just gluing the edges because again, on satin, you see all the little glue squiggles. So, and this piece is a little bit longer than I needed. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to um, cut it off. I'm just going to fold it over the back. Nobody will even notice it like that. There we go. That worked. All right. We want to do our blue. Okay, we should have enough. Now the satin, if you're using satin, it frays. So make sure either you cut all the little frays off or make sure they don't stick out further than what your trim can hide. Okay. So I'm going to put a line of glue. I didn't spread that one. So we're just going to tap this on here. And remember, this top is going to be covered with the black satin waistband, and then the bottom is going to be covered with the black gimp trim. And just follow your trim all the way around it like that. And if you have your little silicone fingers, go ahead and use them. And then I'm just going to trim this one off, just like that. 
Same thing with the other side. I know it's sequined, so the glue will seep through these little sequins. So just give a little tap. Oh, we actually had extra. All right, we have that. And I'm going to trim these two top pieces as well. They don't need to be sticking over. Even though we're covering it, I would rather just trim them. Well, I don't know what that was. Okay, so you can see now we're trimmed up here and we're trimmed down here. So now we grab our gimp. Ah, maybe this is the one that didn't. Okay, so before I start gluing, if I'm not sure if we have enough, I'm gonna go ahead and put it on here and make sure we have enough. I would hate to get halfway through this because you can tell when you, yeah, we have enough. You can tell when you piece two pieces together. It's, it's almost impossible not to, so I'm, I always, I'm always going to measure it before I actually put it down, if, if there's a question. Okay, so. Let's keep going all along that sewn seam there that you, or not even a seam, it's just the sewn line that you just made. Make sure you cover it. Now, with, when you get to the corners, like I said, I don't like to cut it and do two pieces because you're going to have all these frayed things hanging off the edge. So I will just go up a little ways and then I will just, just make it a triangle. And some of it's going to stick up and that's okay. It looks better than that sticking up than it would um, cut edges that the, the fraying is coming off everywhere or you put globs of hot glue on it to keep it from fraying. It's just not pretty. So then you go all the way up here. This is a rounded area, so you should just be able to take your trim, hold it with your finger in the very center, and then just kind of round it down. Not necessarily a triangle, you're just rounding it, so it should be very easy. Again, go all the way down here. And then I just put a, you know an inch or two of glue and then I just take it with my fingernails and then I literally make it a triangle and then just squeeze it together. Like I said, you're going to have a little bump that sticks up right here where the, the, the fabric, you know, folds basically, but it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. It looks way better than if you cut it. So now you can cut it. If that's the way you're doing it, then by all means, just make sure you don't have frays. I'm just going to go all the way up to the edge. Oops. Right there. There we go. What is with these scissors? Holy moly. There's no glue on them. I don't know why they're... <laughs> all right, time for new scissors in this room. <laughs> Lord. They're not working at all. Hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, get rid of all that mess. Okay. So there we go. So we have the pretty black trim and the blue trim. Now this part, the the waistband, it's it's just there. That's what's gonna help glue to the top of this. I mean, it's let's see if these will cut thread still. Oh yeah, they'll cut thread. They just don't cut anything else. Um, I, I just think it, even though it, that part will probably be tucked up into the mesh, you know, I still like to put a bit of a waistband. It's just a personal preference. Really, you could go with just this like this. You don't have to put this extra piece on. I just throw a line of glue. And then set it on there. Oops, some glue on there and it's not perfectly straight I can tell I just completely 
It's not straight. It's okay though. Um, I'm not too, too worried about the top up here. I want it to look finished and neat because they're your, your customer who you sell this attachment to is the only person that's going to see this. Their customer who they make the wreath for is not going to go through and look at the back side and see how straight it was, you know, how neat it was and how straight it was. As I said, this part up here is probably going to be shoved in the deco mesh. You won't even see it. Okay. So then we take this, flip it around, take our bunny. It does not, unless you have a preference for which side is the front and the back, it does not matter. And I like to do this. In, now, you, if you want to, you can do it this way. But the only problem with this way is um, it'll, it tends to buckle back here. This fabric doesn't buckle too bad, but other fabrics I've used will buckle. So by laying this down, face down, placing this on it, and then squishing it down. Basically, you're squishing it, giving yourself a flat surface to glue to. And you can move it around until it's even with the, you know, where your tabs are. So it's even on both sides. You don't have any extra hanging on one side or the other. And even though it's puffed up right now, I know you can't really see it, but once you squish it down, it's gonna glue. Let me pull it down just a little bit. It's gonna glue right along that straight line. And this is gonna require a bit of glue. So what, again, I'm using my hand, using my thumb, pulling it back so that all I have to do is drop it in place once I get the glue on it. And this is going to require, you know, you, you don't want it to be loose up here. You want to make sure you get all the edges. And now take it and just hold it down. Just hold it down. Hold, don't put, don't get your fingers in it. Your fingers shouldn't be in it. You should just be touching the plush bottom of this little bunny. And you do have to hold it for a second because I did put a good bit of glue on there. Okay, so when you flip it around, it gets about as flat as it can be. Let's just put it that way. It's never going to be perfectly flat unless you sewed all of this on here. But that to me, that's just creating a lot more work for yourself. If this part is going to be covered by deco mesh, why would you go through the effort of sewing all this and making it really pretty? You know, I mean, it still looks pretty to me. This is perfectly fine, but uh, I'm not going to go through all of the sewing. Um, I didn't get much glue on the bottom of this. I'm just going to add some more so that it doesn't flare up, right? Because it's right where that hump is right there. So I want to make sure this isn't going to flare up. There we go. Now we have, can't pick them up. We have these little black beads. You can use whatever you like. You can use little Easter eggs, whatever, depending on what your theme is. But these little flat, flat backed beads will just, they're kind of oval shaped. So they're egg shaped, I guess. Okay. Again, I always put the center one on first, and then that gives me uh, the ability to put the other two roughly the same distance and distance apart. And you know, it's never going to be perfect because I'm just eyeballing it. I'm not measuring anything, but it'll be close enough. There, just like that. Okay, so uh, these are the tassels that I have. If you can find them, if not, you can use like little black pom poms, or you don't have to use anything at all. But I like the way it looks, so I'm going to get rid of these. I'm going to get rid of the ugly balls. I don't like them. And then, oops, all the string came apart. So when I cut the ball off, all the little strings came apart. So I'm going to put some glue on that so that they'll hold together for me. Just do that for a second. That way I can use those strings to glue it to the back of these little edges right here. Okay, there's one, here's the other. Again, all came apart, so let's put some glue in there. 
Don't, don't burn your fingers. Well, I don't know if you can find these exact tassels, guys. I, I mean, I buy them by the full roll, or the full bolt, whatever you want to call it. So I just have, you know, 20 yards of black tassels. But that way, if ever I need a tassel, I have them in several colors too. Not all of them have the beads. That just happens to be these ones. But um, I just like to have tassels when I need them. So um, then I'm going to just glue it up under here. Now you can glue this on before you attach it to the body as well. Either way. Okay. So there, cute little tassels. I mean, essentially I have enough that I could have actually put the tassels around the, the hat as well, but I thought that was a bit much, so I didn't go there. Okay, so now we need, and you can just do trim, you can do nothing on the, um, the legs and the arms, but I'm gonna just go for something quick and easy. Oh my goodness, I keep grabbing those scissors and they don't work. I'm going to put those scissors away so I quit grabbing them. I'm just going to do this little bit of blue. Um, I don't think we really need much more. You can do, I think this trim would actually be really cute around the legs. And then if you made smaller ones of these, that would be really interesting. I don't know about cute, but it's a little big. But, you know, think about all the different things you could do with that. I'm just cutting the... Um, feather boa over my trash can but I don't want feathers all over this room and they're us usually my legs and arms are three inches so that means we need six inches in feather boa or five and a half really unless you have the seams but I usually cut them around six inches but I always cut them over my trash can because I've already got feathers everywhere so or yeah, they're everywhere. So now, just kind of figure out where you want them. I like them on this bunny, just right on the ankle. Now these legs might be a little wider than six inches. You can you can kind of torque down the the feather boa, kind of get it inside that fur. Flip it over. Just hold it for a second. Get the other one, you can grab it, and then just hold them for a second. Let them cool off. Now these might be cute. If you didn't do a big flower like this, maybe just doing the egg or something, you know. Um, the coattails take up a lot of space and these little tassels are going to hang right there. So it's up to you. Um, I, should, I mean, honestly, I think the coattails could actually probably been a little bit smaller, a little bit shorter so that this tassel didn't hit the blue area there, but it's up to you. I mean, if you want to cut off an inch of this um, coattail so that it's up a little bit higher to accommodate your tassel, totally fine. All right, so we are going to do our arms really quick, and I like to do with wire. You can sew tabs in there if you feel like it. I just like the wire. These are nine inches as well, so I would need nine inches plus I do a curl in the end, so 10 inches plus at least two inches on the outside, so at least 12 inches. So that's just the bare minimum for me. Remember, you can always trim it. You could not do pipe cleaners in this though. <laughs> the pipe cleaner would not hold whatsoever. So. so when I'm putting them inside my little stuffed arms like this, I just curl up one end so that it doesn't push through. Curl up one end like that. Don't try to push it through the polyfill. You'll be here all day. Just push it along the fabric, like a, make like a spine between the fabric and the polyfill. And I can feel I'm all the way to the end right there. 
and that is automatically going to be the inside of my arms. You know, the wire going down is going to be the inside of the paws, arms, paws. And then, they're everywhere. Of course, I'm going to glue stick. Oh my gosh. Somebody. The never ending glue stick. That's what I need. I need to do Willy Wonka. Never ending. Okay, so I'm just gluing the end of this all the way around. Holding it. And then again, I put another curl in it and then I just fold it. This is that, that I can feel my wire right here. So I know that is the inside of the arm. Okay, so we'll do this one. Oops. Just curl up the end. You just don't want to poke in through the fabric. Stick it down. I can feel the spine of it all the way down. Now these were not the same length, so I'm going to give this a little trim and push the polyfill in and then I'll just add hot glue all the way around. A little bit on the edges just to hold it. Curl that one, fold it down. So now I know that those are both the insides of my arms. <laughs> I have no back to no room again. All right, so now before well, let me get these feathers out of the way really quick. So if this is the inside of an arm right here, then, you know, if theoretically they'll have it curled over something. So I want to put the seam, always, you know, hide the seams on the inside. Like that. So just, uh, oops, put those two together. Like I said, you can do, you don't have to put anything around the ankles and the arms, really. This is just, I'm just trying to give you different ideas. If you like the way the paw looks without anything on it, then don't put anything. I mean, personally, I kind of like the way it looks without anything on it, but you know, putting a trim on it or putting a feather boa on it like this, it's just another option, it's just for fun. It ties, it ties in with the hat. It makes everything kind of tie in together. Okay, now we're going to get our yarn, and this is the last step. We're just going to put our little toes in. Again, this is a yarn needle. It's specifically made for just yarns. It's for quilting, or not quilting, um, it has something to do with... Uh, I don't know, not crochet, the other one. <laughs> the other one, you know. Now, it, because it's not sharp, it takes me a minute to get to go through this fabric. I really have to fight with it. There we go. Okay, so you pull it through, and then when it comes down, you're gonna go through the same hole to the other side. Make sure your holes are even up there. Pull it through, and then you're gonna go right down in front. I'll do I'll, I'll do the next one slower. I just want to show you what it's gonna look like when it's finished. I'm gonna pull it through like that. You're gonna cut it, and then tie a knot in it. Just tie a standard knot. Now, if you have like a, um, a hook or a needle or something, you can pull those threads back through. I don't do that. I just throw a little glob of glue on there and then I kind of, oops, push the fur over it. You know, kind of, well, I made an all out mess with that one. 
And it doesn't really matter if somebody can see the knot anyway. But there, so you have the two little pink lines, one there and one there. They just look cute. It's just that little extra added touch that uh, people enjoy. Okay, so we'll do this slowly now. Now, the feet I do differently, but this is just, when I have these little notches in here, this is how I do it. Um, I just pick a side. I'm just going to pick the left side here. Put that one right through. Go straight up, straight up there. Pull it through and leave a tail. Put my thumb on it. Leave a tail. Straight down again. Same hole. Go back in the same hole. Go to the other side diagonally. Make sure they're even right here. Pull it through. Now you have to go straight down and make another hole right here. Okay, and then what you're going to do is push it over that way, like that, so that when you pull it, it's straight down here, but it comes out over here so that you can tie your knot. Yeah. So, and if you don't want to do all this, you don't have to. You can just glue yarn onto it and have the illusion that there are little paw prints on there. If you would rather just take a piece of this yarn and hot glue it down, then... By all means, just uh, trim off those edges. And this one I will not make a mess of. Put a little bit of glue on the knot. You don't want the knot coming undone. And then I just very lightly push the fur over it. You know, just a little bit, just like that. And there we go. All right, so let's do the toes. I'm not gonna need all of this, so. Okay, so since this is the front, I'll always start in the back because wherever we start is where our, our knot is going to be. So again, <laughs> I gotta push it through. I use, oh, oops, I use the table to help me <laughs> because it's very hard. Okay, so I'm in the back side of the toe. And when I say back side, this is the seam. So our middle toe, our middle string needs to go on that seam. So our, our back one needs to be off to the side like this. Okay, pull it through, leave a tail, go in the same hole again, but this time you're going to come out on the seam. And you really want to focus on that, that seam is what's going to hold it straight. So we have a little mark, pink line there, and then we need to come up down on the seam, not through over here, but on the seam. Again, try to make a hole. If you have a needle, Jeez, I'm trying to go through two layers here, so. Um, you can use an X-Acto knife and make yourself a little hole. I just push it through, it, it goes, it's just a little bit of work. And then you're gonna go diagonally to the other side of this one. So we already have this one in place over here. We just put the, that one and now we're gonna, now when we pull this, it's gonna make that pink one go right down that seam. And then what we do, hole this way I know this looks really brutal I know it sounds brutal and you pull it this way so that you can tie it off in the back but as you can see on the toe we have a pink line here pink line down the center and a little pink line over here um you can't pull these tight and make them make look like toes because we we'd have to sew on two or three more pieces of fabric in order to make it do that. It's just, it's a whole different complicated process. If you've ever bought a ready-made bunny foot that has the little seam, look at how many pieces. I mean, when you go into the stores now, look at the pieces that um, stores are selling that are similar to what we do and look to see how many more actual physical sewing piece, sewn pieces and cuts. I mean, it's just, it's a lot of work. So. I try not to do that. You know, like I said, guys, these are not, these aren't something people are going to keep forever. So don't, 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 uh, don't, don't put so much into it that, you know, you're, you're taking time away. The more time you put in it, the less profit you're making, you know, so I'm fighting with it. Yes, but it's really not too bad. You just have to get that little pop. So I have that one. 
All right, here we go. And then we just cut it off. It just takes some practice. And if you if you mess it up, just pull this thread out and do it again. You're not gonna you're not gonna see the little holes under all the fur and everything. So just practice with it. If you want to put them on, tie a knot. If you have a hook, you can try to pull them through. I don't really go through all that. That's just more frustration and time. Put some glue on it and kind of pinch it so that the fur will gather. And that is it, guys. We are done. Okay, we are finished. <laughs> I don't remember which one was which. Here we go. Our little top hat, our little bunny, feet, a little body, and a cute little arms. And that's it. That's all there is to it. A lot of steps. Just uh, go slow at them. Um, this is a very, very basic um, attachment that I make on a regular basis. It, uh, you know, all of my body sets really follow this way unless it's just legs or something. So I hope you enjoy it. I hope you'll make them. And I cannot wait to see what color combinations you guys use. Um, I mean, the blue and the black is a little bold for a lot of people. Hopefully you will kind of go maybe towards some pastels or something just initially to kind of base what your customers like. But in general, most uh, people, when they think of Easter, they don't think of these bold colors like this. They want something a little bit, uh, a little more pastel-y. So not to say you have to, but I'm just putting that out there. In my experience, they would buy the pastel way before they would purchase this bold blue. Alrighty. So I hope you enjoyed this. Can't wait to see what you make. And uh, if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to contact me. Thanks guys.